Lord, who throughout these forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us to overcome our sins and close by you to stay. As you with Satan did contend and did the victory win, O oh, give us strength in you to fight, in you to conquer sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. In today's gospel, Peter, James, and John hear a voice from a cloud tell them, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Let us pause to ask for God's mercy for the times we have not been attentive to Jesus' voice. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord instructed him. The word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from the Lord. He saved us and called us to holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Gospel of the Lord. The gospel this morning is the account of a mountaintop experience. It's Matthew's account of Jesus's transfiguration. And we always read one of the gospel writers accounts of the transfiguration on the second Sunday of Lent. It marks a significant shift in Jesus's ministry. He's gone up the mountain and he's taken his senior administration with him, Peter, James, and John. They're, of course, the same three that he will ask to stay awake with him in the Garden of Gethsemane before his execution. He has been teaching and feeding and healing. He has made quite a name for himself, and the disciples there are at his side. But on this day, Jesus, Peter, James, and John steal away by themselves up on a mountaintop to retreat, perhaps take a breath a break from the frenetic pace of life down below, the crowds, the suffering, the hungry, the poor, the arguments with the local clergy and the keepers of the law. They've climbed up the mountain to get away from it all. And what happens next is completely unexpected, more shimmering mystery than hard-edged theology. It's like a scene you might remember from the depths of a sleepy dream. Jesus transfigured before them, his face shining like the sun and his clothes dazzling. And Elijah, the great prophet of the Hebrew people with Moses, the one to whom God gave the law on top of Mount Sinai, both appear. And for some reason, this doesn't seem odd to Peter. Two guys who have been dead for hundreds of years showing up out of the blue. Jesus looking like something out of a dream. Elijah, Moses, Jesus... Peter decides right then his life is better lived on the mountains. He says, let's stay here. And multi-talented Peter switches from fisherman to tent maker. He plans to set up camp for a while. Peter's talking as if he's out of his mind. He doesn't get it now anymore that he will be in the garden a few weeks from now. Before Jesus can respond to Peter, a cloud appears similar to the one that appeared a few weeks back at Jesus' baptism. And the voice booms out as it did then, this is my beloved with whom I am well pleased. It's then that they have to journey back down the mountain, Jesus leading them, of course. It's a way in which God comes into the world, not solely in the cloud of mystery, but not just from a voice from heaven, but in the midst of human flesh, God comes down the mountain close to get down in the dirt with the touch of the hand and with the words, do not be afraid. The disciples had to go back down in the valley with nothing more to sustain them than a glimpse. That one voice, one touch to give them courage and to relieve their fear. Of course, reading this gospel in the midst of Lent, we're reminded of another mountain will go up with Jesus, Calvary, in just a few weeks. 
this mountain prefigures that one. And it's there that we see the depths of God's love for us. Jesus will be covered not with dazzling clothes, but with blood and sweat, surrounded not by disciples, by Roman soldiers, not by prophets, but by two thieves. It'll be quite different. God's beloved son will have a broken body ripped open by the tragedy and the valleys of human life and called down the mountain, he will take up his cross. We need to remember that God doesn't live far off in the clouds but dares to walk this earth with us in full humanity, with full mortality, called down the mountain with fear dispelled, we are able to hear Jesus' words of hope and peace. It doesn't mean that the road will not be filled with danger, but bearing the costs of Jesus in this life, we walk this journey with God in the flesh, trusting that fear and death do not get the final word, trusting that there is that vision on the top of the mountain with Jesus in glory. So together we profess our faith I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Lord provides for us streams of living water to quench our thirst and to renew us and glimpses of him in glory. So we place our hope in him as we open our hearts in prayer. For members of the church throughout the world, may our ears be attuned to the voice of God calling us to the fullness of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that as they work to build up their own countries, they also commit to helping those stricken by natural disasters and poverty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our faith community and for members of our families who experience daily hardship, may they trust in the Lord's kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they know the complete and eternal glory of Jesus this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Answer our prayers, O God, that as your Son was transfigured in glory, our world may be transformed into the foretaste of your kingdom through Christ our Lord.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. So with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. This broadcast of the Sunday Mass is made possible by contributions to the Catholic Stewardship Appeal. If you'd like to assist the people of the Diocese of Las Vegas in keeping this ministry on the air, please watch for the information on your screen at the end. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.